What's up, everyone? Welcome back to day five. Here we are at our last final pop up podcast day. I hope you've really been enjoying this. I've been having so much fun talking to you guys and just sharing this incredible, I think, ecosystem and journey through what it really means to be a soul powered business babe with this goal of really merging the spiritual with the actionable. How do we show up in our full spiritual glory and our full energetic glory um, and really exercise that, strengthen it, and at the same time, have really straightforward plans and approaches and strategy for showing up in the physical world, since that's where we are. We are awakened beings here in this physical world. And okay, so we are talking today about the diamond business. Whenever I bring this topic up, it's because there is a symptom that I'm seeing inside of the younger or the newer business woman. So I've had 20 plus years being in entrepreneurship from running brick and mortar studios to managing fitness centers to um, doing online business like I am right now. Um, and managerial experience in the retail world for several years before that. My parents have had several businesses. My whole family is entrepreneurs to my aunt, um, CEOs on both sides, like just onward and onward. Um, So it's very much in my blood and I can't help myself, but be an entrepreneur. I really can't help myself. I am allergic to working to other people. I've got two years working for other people and then that's it. I am like full on hives. I can't work for you anymore. When I see women who are afraid to morph and change and grow and add in spice because they're afraid really they don't trust themselves to make that decision and execute it correctly. Or women are the opposite. They have every idea in the whole world. And that's actually what paralyzes them because they don't have a runway or a system that they can put all of their ideas in to check it against, meaning, is this the right time to launch that? Would it serve my client? Who is my client that I'm speaking to right now? You need a system for both. And the solution to that is DFU, Diamond Frequency Business University. The doors are open right now, you guys. You could jump in and get a pre-sale price. Below this video is the link to click, and that'll bring you to the sales page. You can read all about it. There's so much awesome information on that page. This is the second time I'm offering it, and the women that went through it the first time just are just like steamrolling life right now. They have grabbed ownership of their business. They understand who their business is for. They understand their role and the business's role and separate. I want to get to that in just a second. And and now there's no stopping them. The momentum and the velocity that they have is incredible. And what I see primarily from women who do work inside of Diamond Frequency University is they stop second guessing themselves. They stop wondering, should I do what I desire? They're like, oh, I have a desire. That's for me. I've been chosen. Now let me figure out the logistics. Okay, when do I want to execute this? Okay, what are the, they reverse engineer it. They're thinking like CEOs. They're thinking like, this isn't just a pet project. This is my business. And that's the switch you need to make too. Inside of the Diamond Lab, which is coming up sooner, we actually step into fully owning your role as a CEO. Separate from the role of your business. So let's get into it. A Diamond business is a structure where you are separate from your business. And by the way, this isn't just Kim Fisher's idea. And it's not just an idea that's new uh, new and novel to just the DFU. This is a concept that many entrepreneurs understand, especially the energetic, soul-based, soul source women who are out there and fully embodied in their CEO energy. They understand this principle. And you need to too. You are not your business. Oh my gosh, what does that even mean? Well, first, before we get to what it means, here's why I would say it to you. If you are someone who every time someone says no or doesn't sign up to your program, you feel like crap. If you are someone who is shy and afraid to go live on Instagram, 
if you are afraid to post on your regular Facebook page that you're doing this business thing over here because friends and family will see you and it's kind of weird to have the people that known you your whole life all of a sudden see you as this business person, they'll be like, who is she? And you're afraid of that judgment. You need to understand you are not your business. Oh, another really great one is for those of you that have been in business for a little bit and you're burnt out, the fact that you don't have business hours, um, the fact that you're giving away things for free, the fact that you're giving refunds when maybe you don't want to, the fact that people halfway through one of your programs wants a refund and you're even negotiating that, the fact that you don't have autoresponders to get back to people after certain hours because you, you have business hours. There's all of these energetic leaks that happen when a woman does not understand that she is not her business, that you and your business are separate. So the benefit here is when you understand that you're not your business, you get your life back. When you understand that you're not your business, you have boundaries. When you understand that you are not your business, you no longer attach your self-worth to whether or not someone buys, signs up, shares, likes, or this goes viral or whatever. Your business is not you, so you are always safe. You can focus on being a human over here and having human-like emotions, but it does not cross-contaminate, for lack of a better word, into the business and its endeavors and its goals and the way it operates in the world. This is a really important distinction that's going to prevent you from having burnout most of the time, and it's going to help you maintain your integrity and your personal self-confidence and feeling of self-worth, because I'll tell you what, and you may have already experienced this, let me know in the comments below. There are so many people that think because someone doesn't buy or doesn't like or doesn't share or their Instagram following, the numbers aren't going up, that they're doing something wrong and it cripples you, right? Have you felt that before? I know I have but my heart literally breaks in half. So I'm like, why isn't this working? And then you're focused on why it isn't working and why you're not getting the likes or why the money isn't coming in. And guys, guess what? This is why manifesting is a whole school inside of DFU. One, we can't use our current reality to predict anything about what's possible for us for, for the future because everything in your current reality, including if people are buying or not, likes and follows, shares and all of that is a printout from the past. Whatever you posted yesterday, it's in the past. Who cares if it's getting likes or not? It actually should not affect whether you show up with full enthusiasm today. Today's a new day. You cannot use anything in your current reality to help you feel better about yourself because that's the same double-edged sword. You'll use it to pump you up to feel good. And that's the same energy you're using. When someone cuts you down, you hide. So we can't use it. Now, you will use external metrics to understand whether that post hit, right? Did that do the trick? Do people connect with that? Is it going viral? Did, it, did they relate? That's an example of a very strategic way of looking at the external data that you're getting from something that you're doing socially on social media, but you're not using something you just posted on social media to feel good about yourself because that's what everyone does at first when you believe you are your business. When you believe you are your business, you take it all personally. And when you take it personally, it's really hard to get out of bed some days. When you take things personally in your business, you and your business are one, you're entangled. You take everything to heart. So someone criticizes your offers or someone criticizes the way you said something. Oof. You know, that, that feels like a punch. And then the next day, okay, well, you took that punch yesterday. And then today you post something or share an email and five people unsubscribe. Oof, another personal attack. There's another blow. And then the next day you show up, you go live and zero people show up or one or two people pop in and they leave really quickly. You take that personally, boom, that's another blow. And this goes on day after day, after a week, after a month, after a year. And it's the reason why everyone ends up leaving the entrepreneurial game. Not the only reason, but a huge part of it because everything is energy. Everything is your mindset. Everything is what you're bringing to the table. It's the way you view yourself and it's the way you know. It's your mindset. It's your attitude. 
In order to have an attitude of, I am already a success, which is exactly the attitude you need to be in, it's not you see the mirror reflection and then you understand your reality. It's the other way around. It's you see the reflection, you ignore it, and you know what your reality is. You don't need the reflection to show you, i.e. the physical things around you. You don't need that to show you what's possible. You're showing the mirror what's possible through your images and your mind. Does that make sense? That's internal grit and determination and moxie. And that comes from understanding the five power codes. And it, and it really comes from being your own principle of power and neutralizing, stepping back and owning your power to the point where it brings you into a speed of velocity that is unreasonable. You're just like, I don't understand how I'm doing all these crazy things and and life feels so good and fun. Your business, believe it or not, exists without you. Business is the exchange of dollars and cents in exchange for services or goods. That's business. Anyone can start a business. If you decide you don't want to do the business that you're doing, someone else could take it and start it up next week. That's business. Your business exists on a physical level without you. Now, the energy or the essence of your business, because your business does have an essence. There is almost like a soul. There's like an energy. There's a idea behind the business. Yeah. And you feel it. That's usually what hits you first is this idea. This is a sort of, a sort of soulful awakening of, Ooh, like this, I just got this business idea. And then we fill in the bits and the pieces that will eventually become um, in the physical world. But that soulful idea is the business itself. Now here's the amazing thing about this. And this is also the refreshing and the hard, cold reality and the facts, even the soul itself which has chosen you, right? Source, the divine, has said you're perfect for this. That's why the idea comes to you in the first place. So start treating your ideas with more respect because that's who they're coming from. Plus, it is also you picking up on a conscious, an unconscious request, if you will, from the collective. It doesn't mean you're the only one that can do it. See, there's many people who can probably do what you do. Well, I know there's a lot of people that do what I do. I'm not the only empowerment and holistic empowerment and manifesting and and business coach out there. My God, there's a dime a dozen. But no one can deliver the message like I do. That's where my uniqueness comes in. But the concept and the soul of the business itself, well, if I said I give up today, someone else is already doing it. That's the beauty, but that's also the reason you need to seize it. When the idea comes in and you realize what it is and how powerful that idea is, it is time to believe in yourself and take action and move forward. However, this is where that separation in the business comes in. We are almost in gratitude that she exists with us. Because your business has a separate soul, separate energy, separate force field in a sense, we can then begin to channel with her. We can then begin to open up to her. This is the energy. This is the woo, yes, but it's also the visualization and the creative understanding that your business, its soul, its spirit is an idea. It is is intelligence itself coming to you saying, hey, you have the goods. You are able to do this. Will you do it? Your business is almost coming to you asking, will you dance with me? That's going to be the difference between really a business owner who can go the long haul who will be innovative and will also maintain her sanity and mental health as she goes forward running a business versus someone who is constantly in burnout cycles and doubting themselves and feeling very lethargic and lonely when they operate their business. When you are not your business, I'm going to say it again, you get your life back because when your business is separate as it is, you respect it. You see it as a business entity. You don't see it as you. Do you have business hours or do you have human hours? No. A business has business hours, though. It's open and it's closed at specific times. Now, that's an energetic boundary. Why is that there? Because your business doesn't need you up its ass all day long, micromanaging it. Your business is an entity that exists without you. And it has a mission. It has a pulse behind it. It serves a certain type of person, right? And elevates their life. That's bigger than you. And so your mission is coming along. Your business is tapping you on the shoulder and being like, I choose you, duck, duck, goose, let's go. And you're going, 
ah, I'm you, you're me. No, the business is like, you are being a overly needy girlfriend right now. Like, I don't need you hovering over my shoulder. I'm a business. You be a CEO. You be separate than me because we're separate. You're a human. Your business is a business. Hopefully this is getting clearer and clearer. When you know that you're not your business, you can step away at the end of the day. This was one of the biggest things for me um, last year, really, and I'm still working on it towards the end of this year, is understanding that at the end of the day, when I am done and I shut my laptop and I turn the lights off in my office here, and I go and be with my partner and be with my cat and, and watch our Netflix and enjoy life and start a fire in the living room, these things before when I believed I was my business, I could never really enjoy those moments. I would always be thinking about what I needed to still be doing. There were never a feeling of completion. And it's really important that you have this feeling of completion because this is what allows you to feel like you're making progress. And this is what allows you to be a human. Sometimes a lot of entrepreneurs, they fall into this trap where they end up losing friends and they end up disconnecting themselves from their family and sometimes even their children and their spouse because they're so wrapped up in the business. Yes, you're going to need to work hard. And yes, you're going to need to hustle sometimes. But we do not need to sacrifice our own love and health and social connections. Those are the very things that fuel the entrepreneur, the CEO, so that she can be in a partnership with the brand and with the business without her hobbies and exercise and love and sex and joy and and all of the things that make her a human, the CEO gets burnt out. Where's your mission if the CEO is burnt out? Where's the mission if the CEO is pushing through burnout and constantly showing up with worry and lack-mindedness? And the idea here is to stick around in the game because if you have longevity, That means you're consistent and the ones that will win are the ones that are consistent. It's not about being flashy or having more money or it's not about being able to even make a reel better than the other person. It's about being in the game for the long run. Those are the ones that stand out. Those are the ones you're following right now that are leading the pack and making millions. Those are the people that are doing it that you admire. Why are they even there? Why do you even know their name? because they never stopped. So being able to grow, being able to scale means that you need to be your best. And when you are your business, you can't be your best because everyone needs everything from you. But when you're not your business, everything needs to be done and gone through the business and the CEO can go get some rest. When you believe you're your business, you are in perfectionism mode and no one can do it as good as you. One of my friends, um, she owns a business and I was recently talking with her and um, she's at the point absolutely where she needs to hire a team member, especially because she's got some surgery coming up soon. And that requires that she's going to be off of her feet and her job is being on her feet. Her and her husband have this business together. And I said to her, why don't you start like hiring? She's like, oh, I don't want to pay someone. I don't want to do the W-2s and all that. I said, well, go get a contractor. Well, I don't want to do the 1099. Well, then have someone volunteer and just make sure that, you know, this it works and floats in New York State. Make sure you don't know, check your ends and your outs there. But like, you're going to need some help because right now you're burnt out and you could feel how negative she was. This is normally a very positive person. She was very negative. She was very worrisome. And she says, you know, Even if I hired someone, I don't trust that they would do a good job. I said, what do you mean? Why? You'd be training them. Like, trust yourself, right? Like, train them up the way you want to be trained. She says, no, even then, I know it wouldn't be me there. And I want things done exactly how I want them to be done. And she looked at me. She goes, I know that's complete ego, isn't it? And I said, that's not you being an ego. I was like, that's you being an idiot. (laughs) Now, I know this person for the last 15 years of my life. So me saying that to her did not knock her. Like she wasn't offended. We speak like this often to each other, but she knew what I meant. That story is to, is to show you that that is an example of someone who is literally cutting their own lifeline to the, to the ability for her not only to scale her business, but to enjoy life again. We all know what it's like rolling up to the counter of a coffee shop or walking into a retail store and there's the owner behind the counter, not happy, 
not smiling, giving you the most toxic energy ever. Have you experienced that? I know I have. And you're like, man, I love your clothes. I love what you're selling. Your product's great, but you suck. Your energy is so terrible. And and you didn't even tell me to have a good day. And, and you didn't tell me about the next sale you have. And you didn't slip a coupon in my bag. You didn't ask me to like you on social media. You didn't ask me anything. And I'll I'll never come back because I actually want a good experience. That's what people want. People want an experience with you. How are you going to give them that if you're burnt out? How are you going to give them that if you're worried? Are they going to buy from me? You got to bring in that needy energy. We all know that feeling. And that comes from someone believing that they are their business. They take it very personally if you don't buy. And you can almost feel that neediness from them, right? If you are not your business, you don't need their sale in the same way. You desire the transaction because you know that money is going to come in and fuel the mission. You know that you're going to be able to buy some more equipment or that's going to help you pay bills or that's personally going to come into your own account and you're going to be able to take that vacation at the end of the year. Like There's an excitement to make a transaction, but there's no neediness. And so what happens when you don't worry? You keep showing up. And what happens when you keep showing up positively and with good energy and full belief? Because again, you're not using your current reality to base your, your enthusiasm and your belief. You are using your own internal flame and your own internal belief, your own internal principle of power. You with me? You're using that as your guiding light and as the momentum inside of you. And that's what makes you keep showing up. And guess what happens when you keep showing up and you're in a positive energy state, people can't help but notice. Here she is again. Ha, huh, here she is again. Oh my gosh, there's that person again. Here she is again. Wow, she's. I guess she's consistent. You know what the number one thing comes out of consistency? Trust. And you know what the number one thing is that comes out of trust? Money. So here you are rolling around through life, having a great time in a great mood because you're not your business. You get good sleep at night. You have strong boundaries because you're you're not checking your Instagram and DMs up until midnight. You are putting your phone away. This is what allows you to run your business, not from maiden energy or not as a pet project, but as a CEO and to treat your business as a company. Let me know if this is resonating in the chat below. What is the biggest biggest takeaway you're taking from all of this? And I'm calling on you right now for you to elevate your professionalism and to start treating your business as just like that, a business with business hours and standard operating procedures and auto replies and emails set up that are called funnels. And also your business isn't a baby. She's a queen. Think about that. When I say that your business is a queen just like you, does that change the way you feel about it? For most people, it does. When we went through the first round of DFU earlier this year, that was such a big revelation. Women were telling me inside of our chat space, everything shifted for them when they started to realize that their business was mature already and that it was waiting for them to kind of catch up. So, guys, there you have it. Below this in the comment section, is going to be links to sign up for the Diamond Frequency University. Right now, like I've been saying, there's a pre-sale price going on. Once we start in February, that price is going to go up. So now is the time to get in. And when you sign up, you get immediate access to the hub. And inside the hub, not only is there the business school that has about six different modules of lessons and replays that you can start getting into right now. You can start your learning process today. You don't have to wait until February when we officially start. But also there's the manifesting university inside where you're going to learn the manifesting principles and technology and embodiment and breath work that help you anchor into neuroscience, anchor into actual data and strategy that works and understand the process of manifesting. And a directly a handshake, it's a fist bump manifesting in business together, which is why I smash them together. But guys, but guys, Don't forget, the doors are open right now for you to sign up for the Diamond Lab. The Diamond Lab, the link is below. Click on it right now. Go check it out and read about it. Guys, this is really for the woman who is like, I need to know who my business is. 
Kim, I believe you. I understand the benefits. She's not me. I'm not it. Okay. But how do I actually wrap my head around that more? I'm intrigued. I want a life that has longevity. I want my life back. I want to get out of these burnout cycles. Then you need to join Diamond Lab. Diamond Lab is actually going to be a whole exercise on learning who your business is without you. We're going to actually be able to picture her, draw her, communicate with her, and understand through the spiritual process how we can actually begin to know who she is and channel with her to get downloads. This is what's going to help you understand and map out the next quarter. If you are someone who absolutely is terrified to go live on Instagram, to make a video or do anything like this, then this is going to break the ice for you. So if this sounds intriguing, remember Diamond Lab is really art class and chemistry class mashed together. The laboratory doors are open now. You can jump in. There we go, you guys. One through five, pop-up podcast is done. That's a wrap. Thank you so much for being here with me. I would love to know how this has impacted your life and I hope you've had some breakthroughs. Let me know in the comments below. It's been an honor to be here with you and I look forward to seeing you in any capacity in the future. Absolutely hope to see you inside a Diamond Lab and I can't wait to see who joins and feels that call. Yes, to join me inside of DFU, the Diamond Frequency Business University. Babe, love you so much. See you on the path.